All right, everybody, welcome to another Gambling Lab, Lab segment brought to you by Bogey Proof. Uh, I got myself, TJ and Paul, coming to you live with some Olympic previews here. Olympic golf, I'm going to be totally transparent here. I did not watch shit in Rio. I did not really care for it when it happened then. But given, you know, paying a lot more attention to golf this year through this stuff, um, got a little bit more interest. I mean, there's a few different storylines going in. Obviously, COVID's already had its role in this, in the, you know, in the field and whatnot. So a little bit more excited this year. So I figured it's worth giving it the uh, proper attention with, you know, a little gambling lab segment for the, the men's Olympics, which start tonight, which is Wednesday. Uh, just mm-hmm. due to the time difference. So it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all primetime golf, which I'm kind of looking forward to watching. Yeah, it's good. Primetime golf is really awesome. I know we get the Century uh, Tournament of Champions where I think it ends around like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. This goes to what? Maybe 2, 3, 4 in yeah, the morning? Yeah, a little bit. sure. Don't even get understand Japan time yet, but I'm sure we will uh, in the next four, time, uh, four days. But um, no, it's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, the storylines uh, – one that kind of sticks out to me is uh, is Kyle Morikawa. Just does he roll it hot? Um, it'll be cool. This is going to be fun. You know, playing for your country, a lot of pride. Some of these guys haven't played for their countries before. Some have. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what the mix is like. Really cool. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, I'd have, have to, to assume that Kyle was just going to keep it rolling. rolling. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I guess. guess... It's, I'm, interested I'm interested to see how Patty, Patty Reed does in the short notice, notice getting, getting out to Japan, Japan trying, trying to practice. practice. Yeah, does, does, you, you know, you know everything, everything around, around that, that whole thing. thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm surprised. surprised like, how, many how many people do they, they pass to get down to Patrick, Patrick Reed, too? Of, of, well, I, like, think, I mean, there's a top three or four that already, like, opted out, you know, right? That said, like, I'm not like, – I think DJ and whatever, like, yeah, I'm not going. And then I think it just goes on – um like similar to like the Ryder Cup standings, I think that's like a kind of similar point system. So like, like mm-hmm. Kepka, Kepka was out, Cantlay out, out, Harris, Harris English, English out, and then they went, went to Reed. Reed. I, didn't I didn't even realize Patrick, Patrick Reed was twelve in the world. world. Holy, Holy shit! shit. Yeah, uh, he won a Tory early in the I year. I thought he was going to be like twenty or something. Right now. He last he's year playing like ass, so it kind of seems like he's yeah. The, the yeah. summer yeah. for him, but he was buzzing in the winter and like early nice. part of the season, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, DeShambo popped for COVID and then they got Reed on, like you said, short notice, right? I think he's, I think he's like getting there now. Like, he's mm-hmm. like, you know, he's like has a half a day to get some practice in over there. So, be kind of happy though that Bryson isn't playing, right? We, now we don't yeah. have to root for him. I don't, yeah. I, like, I'm, I'm good with a week off of Bryson. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. Like, I'm, when, when the golf doesn't match up with it and you just stir the pot, <clears throat> excuse me stir the pot as much as he does it's like it's just like exhausting right i mean he just hasn't played that well the last few months i mean the majors hasn't been that great for him this year and when he just brings all the baggage that he brings i'm like all right i'm enough of the like dog and pony show like i just don't i'm exhausted by it but that's we can have a whole separate podcast on yeah (laughs) yeah um anyways so you know, getting into it, looking at, like, the field, right, for U.S., we got you know, Reed, like you mentioned, JT, Xander, Morikawa, some absolute studs there. Some of the top, I think, with Patty Reed being 12, it's four of the top 12 players in the world. Yeah. Um, and then you got Great Britain and Ireland. You got Shane Lowry, Rory, Tommy Fleetwood, Paul Casey, some, you know, relatively household names. Victor Hovland's in there. Um, Dave Answer. Those are kind of the guys that stick out to me from – just world ranking wise, and then getting back to some storylines. I mean, Sung JM and Siwoo Kim, uh, for the relative Koreas that they play for. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I guess which Korea, so I'm gonna throw the blanket on that one. But, um, basically playing to get out of mandatory military service. And always Can you imagine on podcasts and probably even this segment too? But, like, we talk about motivated athletes on this segment a lot. And I mean, what more motivation do you need between choosing from? a millionaire PGA tour career or war, you know, like yeah. I, it's like, so they, and the only way they get out of that is with a medal in the Olympics, or I think somehow the masters is roped into it where it's okay. Um, it's like not all majors. major. It's like, is yeah. it all majors? Okay. But either way, Something they like opted out of the British open because, you know, looking at the strength of field, right. I mean, we only, we just listed off like the 10 guys that we even know outside of Siwoo and Sungjae in this field. Um, so they just, you know, just due to the strength of field, they just got a better chance of getting something done this week. Um, and kind of, and they also like, they get credit for third here, right? You get a bronze account, any kind of medal. So yep. um, 
interested to see how those two do. I'm, I'm pulling for them as much as you can while also rooting for, obviously, the U.S. to get some medals. Um, I would not hate seeing Sanjay mm-hmm. you know, get a gold out of this and be like, I mean, imagine that feeling, like, not only winning gold medal, but winning gold medal to get yourself out of a military. That is yeah. three years. Think like, about the putt. Like we putt for money. Think about putting yeah. for military. Yeah, time. yeah. The pressure and everything like that. I mean, I hope it. I hope it doesn't overwhelm him because that's so much pressure to put on yourself. Um, but at the same time, uh, he's been you know working his ass off for months leading up to it. So I hope you know he's prepped enough where he can kind of just go out there and do his thing and just rely on the work that's already been put mm-hmm. in and have a good week. But Outside of that, who do you guys, you know, whether storyline or not storyline, like who do you guys like this week? TJ, mm-hmm. I know you've kind of looked into a little bit of the weather that can obviously yeah. you know, impact who we like, but what are you guys thinking? Yeah, so for the weather and how that's going to really impact like the type of golfers that I'm especially looking at, um, with this course being 35 miles northwest of Tokyo, weather's going to be in the mid 80s. Um, it doesn't look like there's any chance of rain. It looks like it's going to be pretty good for. For sun, there might be a couple showers, so we'll see. Um, we'll see if they actually hit. Um, but for those reasons, and then also the the contour of the course, like the the layout is not, it's not very undulated. It's relatively flat. Um, putts are pretty straightforward here. So I'm looking at a guy this week because of the weather and how the course is going to look. Um, guys who can score and who are playing well, you know. Immediately, the guy of six to mine is Kyle Morikawa. Um, he just obviously is the, the overwhelming favorite, um, rightfully so, coming off the open win, put on an absolute clinic. Um, what better than it is to have a guy that's just going to continue to roll it from tournament to tournament? I, I just feel like he's going to keep it going and, and keep that narrative of a, a very good, uh, very polished young golfer. Uh, would be would be great to go open in an Olympic uh, gold medal. I think he's at least going to place. I think that would be my, my lock of the week for him. But that would be really cool if he went gold medal and uh, Claire Jug in a three-week span. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, quite yeah. the combo there. Paulie, what do you got? Oh, oh sorry. sorry. I was, I was, I was looking, looking, at looking at the course's, course's website, website and just got, got rattled, rattled that, that <laughs> for, for a guest, guest to play, play on the weekday, day, they have they to be have accompanied, accompanied by a by member or have, have a written letter, letter by a by member. member. To the, to the course, course presented the course, course. And, they and they have, have to, to book, book the tea time, time three, three months in advance. So I'm, I'm I'm rattled right now by that. I did start um, to get rattled a little yeah. bit when I was reading about the course and like I was trying to learn Japanese history. I was just like, <laughs> this is a little too much for me. I, I I'll just take what the course is called and I mean, I mean, pronounce that. Imagine, imagine booking, booking a tea, a tea time, time right now for October, for October or like, or like November. <laughs> like, who would, who would, no. make, sure that, make sure you clear that Sunday. You know, you, you go on golf, golf now, down three days in advance, and book a tea time. time. Come on. That, I mean, that <laughs> means it's got to be. I mean, I know it's a totally different culture over there, so I don't know like really how it goes, but I assume that means it's a pretty damn good track, right? Like, if it's that private, that exclusive, you got to do all those kind of hoops and jumps to even get on property probably means it'll be pretty fun to watch come you know later tonight and throughout the week but a guy that i just realized i totally passed on which is shame on me hand up um hideki matsuyama representing the home country yeah, yeah. i mean i got that that's on me hand up um masters champion right now right like he's got to be you know and he didn't get to play in the open due to covid but i mean more time for him to just be at home grinding and talk about a guy with pressure on him i mean we talked about how big of an impact his master's victory had on you know japan Mm -hmm. and the country itself and now hosting an olympics being kind of like a home game here for him right i mean yeah it's got to be a lot of pressure being you know that's you know solid and you know highly ranked and you know he's probably fourth or fifth on the betting odds i was just looking at um maybe but like that's a lot of pressure on him too to not to not it's not like he's a long shot you know he's reigning master's champ top 20 player in the world um and being in your home country i mean that's a ton of pressure as well so be interesting to see how you know a few of these guys that they're not just playing for their country they have the pressure of their country on them right like think for guys like on the u.s side you know like the u.s isn't breathing down colin's neck to go get a gold this week or you're like a complete failure right like that's not like the tone where for some of these guys whether it's personal or just countrywide things like it's it's a little extra incentive but the end yeah, of the day, yeah. it all comes down to motivation, right? I mean, I think, and you've heard guys like the thing that's sticking out to me is like Tommy Fleetwood's like 
excuse my language, but I fucking love the Olympics, you know? Like, yeah. Like, you want to find guys like that because you it's, do. Kind of a, it's like kind of a, for lack of a better phrase, it's a crapshoot field. It's just like thin, you know, like mm-hmm. there's some really, really talented players in here, obviously with the guys from the U S great Britain, Hideki, you know, Hovland, like the, the top tier guys are in there, but at the end of the day, it's just a little bit thin, but at the same time, like a little bit of motivation to get these guys up. I mean, they're all millionaires, right? At the end mm-hmm. of the day, it's not like, it's not like you're, you know, badminton guy where if he wins gold mm-hmm. in badminton, like that's his claim to fame for his life. And he's not going to make millions of dollars elsewise, you know, like it just, it's a different vibe with them being professional athletes outside of being Olympians where you got to find guys that you got to find who, who's going to care this week is to be a little bit motivated. You know what, too, Fontaine, I think it's a very interesting point, right? You're going to have a a lot of guys that have pressure, but I think you're going to have some guys that feel that they're teamed with their country, right? I feel like a Tommy Fleetwood's a good situation where he may not necessarily feel he's got the weight of the shoulders carrying the country, or more so he's got the country uh, alongside him kind of going and and trying to right the ship and and have um, England win it, right? Like, I just think that that's just really cool for – for some of these guys, I think you're going to get a, an added guy down way below, and and uh, you may not even know that plays well because they have that that pride for their country. You feel like yeah. they they got them on their sides. Um, you know, one guy that kind of sticks out, and I was looking at DK this week, and nothing's easy about DK. I guess one thing for DK is to to keep it simple. Um, so don't overthink it. And I, I see a guy that's done pretty well, and I think it's his time to, to do pretty well, especially if he can get his country to rally around him. But um, Norlander, you don't really hear much of him, but I feel like a, he's got Sweden on his side. You know, it, it'd be pretty cool to, to see him pick it up. But I'm just going to pick a, a guy that nobody really knows or really talks about but has a chance to, to go off if they've done well in, in some golf courses, just make a name for himself this week. But, yeah, there's a ton of narratives, and, um, yeah, there could be guys that, that do well with with that pressure of their uh, their country with them. Yeah, I think that's a good point because that's a guy like, I mean, he's been on tour, right? He's not like some guy you've never heard of before. But at the mm-hmm. same time, he probably sees this like, hey, like, you know, this is an awesome opportunity. I'm loving it here. I'm, you know, like I'm one of the bigger Swedish golfers that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah. I mean, Alex Noren, I think, right, as well. But like a couple yeah. of these guys, like, I, you know, I'm the guy for my country. So like, especially Victor Hovland, right? Like first Norwegian to win on the Euro tour. Like that's cool. Guys like that. It's like, this is such an opportunity for me to like come out here, represent my country and like really become like a superstar when I'm back home, you know, right? Like that's just like such a awesome, it's, it's such a cool event when you get like, I mean, the, the Olympics in general, right? You get all these different countries competing and you get guys that, you know, may not be the cream of the crop and, whatever or they play a sport that's not you know the most popular thing in the world paying millions of dollars to the star athletes where like this is their time to shine right like a guy like norlander he's got to be like you know i'm not going to be like a 10-time pga tour winner or win a major like that's probably not obviously you know a professional golfer so he strives for those things but he's gonna Mm -hmm. be like this is where i get my name on in the history books is something like this where i can go get it it's like unless a guy like jt or morikawa or like i mean rory kind of sucks right now but a guy like of that caliber just for whatever reason just goes out there and just tears it up like yeah they might kind of put that you know that kind of storyline to bed but i would really bet the opposite this week that it's more of a crapshoot you're gonna have guys that you're not really familiar with at the top and just like because of the whole atmosphere that the olympics brings and kind of brings out the best in people hopefully but but getting more into like specific picks and stuff like that um, at the end of the day, I mean, who are you guys riding with this week? I have a few different plays between like a pick to win. And then I also found some matchups I kind of liked and I'm a sucker for the matchups, especially when it's a smaller field like this, where I don't have to do, like, I'm not looking at a million of them. I just pick a few guys that I think are going to play well this week and kind of find where they have good odds and kind of hammer them. But I'm going to ride JT this week. I just feel like, I don't know. I just, it, just feels like he's really really good and i'll take the odds at plus 850 i mean it just seems like i don't know i gotta give him a run i never get him right but i feel like this week i I got a chance and then i also took hideki over rory just because i feel like rory really just won't care (laughs) yeah yeah he's just there well yeah i mean he didn't play in 2016 2016. i don't don't think it was was because of zika Zika. yeah you know 
his, his religious, religious beliefs, beliefs political, political beliefs, beliefs so, so where, where he is, he is in Northern, Northern Ireland, Ireland and UK, UK Ireland, Ireland, all, all that, that stuff. stuff. But, but yeah, it really seems like he's like he, I've his Instagram this week has been more active than ever, like with Omega stuff. So I feel like it's just Omega, uh, yeah, yeah, give, give him, him a little more money, money to play over. Like, uh, yeah, and be like, hey, we'll leave you yeah. alone after this for a little while. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. On those lines, I'm sure it's you know there's more to it than that, but I feel like there, that's kind of the big driver. And then I got Sungjae over Abe answer again, just riding motivation. And then I took Fleetwood over Lowry just because I think Fleetwood's a little bit of a better golfer and also good spirits and kind of seems to be a little bit fired up about these Olympics as well. Just those are all plus, like I took all the dogs. Those guys are all dogs in those matchups. So I, was, I mean, Deku was plus 101, not really a dog, mm-hmm. but um, <laughs> pretty yeah, much yeah. just, I, I just couldn't, couldn't see them being plus money and not take a, take a flyer on those guys. Of course. Yeah, for me I, this I, week, or go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I was just gonna go, go through the, the, the my winners, winners that, that I picked, picked here. here. It's just Kawa five, five to one, one Corey, Corey Connors, Connors is twenty five to one, and then Sung J twenty eight to one. one. Nothing, Nothing crazy, crazy, but it's just, just, just I mean, I mean just, just three dudes, dudes who I feel like never waver all too much, much anyways, anyways on any golf course. And you know, Sung J is Matt. You mentioned earlier, you know, always playing for a little more this week. Uh, uh, and, and then, then I took, I took similar, similar bet to you. Bet as you. I have Matsuyama over Rory, Rory but by a stroke and a half, so it's plus 120. Okay. Uh, JT, JT over Rory, Rory as well. well. One and One a half, half or whatever. whatever. Uh, and then I, got, I, do I do have, have Paul Casey over Hovland and Paul Casey over Patty Reed. Reed. Wow, but big Paul Casey. Paul Casey huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, going to run it back? No to fans? I don't know. Fading Rory and on Paul Casey. I don't know. This is uh, definitely a uh, Paul Casey event, right? Like, like, you know, like no Paul, Casey, Paul Casey is just known. He's a super, like, solid golfer, but he's known for just lingering and not really closing the door or, like, getting in that top ten, falling out of it, and then back-ending his way back in come Sunday. And this one, he might just have a little bit more wiggle room just based on how good he is and be able to – Stay uh, stay involved a little longer. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think, think it would be big for England, England to have the the back to back gold medals, and, and he's, he's going to definitely, definitely be a guy, guy that will bring up him winning the gold medal as often as he can, can as <laughs> Justin <laughs> Rose did. So <laughs> I, I I think there's those two aspects. I think like you know I, I don't know something about those English English guys and those gold medals. Just because Justin Rose like recency bias. One, and I, I feel like, like every single event, and you, you always hear him talking about winning the Olympics, winning the Olympics, winning the Olympic gold. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, all right, right man. man. Well, well, I feel, I feel like, like Paul Casey could be that guy for the next four yeah. years. I could, that is a very good, just like, it, it's, <laughs> almost like it. it's almost like Justin Rose repeats if Paul Casey wins. It's the same, <laughs> shit. Yeah, 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 it's the same thing. So just, <laughs> just run it back. Yeah, I like that. It's a little on the DK side of things, kind of, I'm very similar to you, Paul, right? I'm, I'm looking at. Kyle Morikawa being my outright winner this week, this week double downing on him. I also have Sungjae in the lineup with Siwoo Kim. Talking about motivated, I bet, I bet motivation. both guys did pretty well. And uh, Sungjae or um, Siwoo is a little bit cheaper. He was seven eight hundred. Uh, Sungjae is nine grand. Uh, Colin was eleven thousand two hundred, which means we are bottom. We're bottom feeders for the most part. We'll start with. My boy Jonathan Vegas, who is at 7,400. Played good um, last week. Played great last week. He looked pretty good. Um, and then I want to say Mike Pereira, like the football guy, but it's not. Uh, <laughs> Mito Pereira, he's a Chilean. I don't know who the hell he is. I've never seen him in his pictures, literally the, the Chilean flag. However, he's had some recent success at the last three PGA Tour events that he was on. More notably, the 3M. He came in sixth. So that's recent, real recent. But he's also had 11 top 10s on the Corn Ferry Tour in May 26 of 37 cuts. We got a chance here. So we'll yeah, just add him to the lineup. Well, we never he's know. He's professional golf. He's been under the yeah. fire. And like you said, pretty, you know, playing well as of the last few weeks. So, yeah, yeah I like that. Especially being, like, out. bottom feeder. That's all That's all day. Yeah, big bottom feeder guy. And then uh, Norlander. What's his first name? Is it Henrik? Probably. Yeah, Henrik Norlander. <laughs> Another guy, a bottom feeder, he's 6,800, just fits the mold of the lineup so I can get those uh, guys that are motivated at the top, and I think they're going to do well. So 
Um, but yeah, they had nothing crazy thrown in, a, in one or two contests, and we'll see how it goes. It's the Olympics, right? Just hoping yeah. for uh, hoping for our end, a USA guy to, to take it home. And um, now that you mentioned Patty Reed, and he's been out there for a little bit, I'm very interested to see how he does now too. Um, yeah, the Captain America. Do we get that this week? Is this going to be like something could... that gets him going? This is the type of event that gets Patty Reed going. So yeah. he picks it up in the Northern Trust. He wins like the BMW Championship, goes and finishes strong in the FedEx, and then rolls into Ryder Cup. And we're all thinking, "Hey, Patty Reed, dude, this guy is now ready to go." Like, is this the event that kickstarts him? Who knows? Yeah, no, I think that's that's a good point. Just because if you look at the Ryder Cup standings, which again we'll probably hit on whatever the week it like whenever their next week off is we'll definitely do a Ryder cup episode but oh, he's kind of in that you know i need to get picked group like he's not an automatic qualifier and like you said his recent forms been pretty shitty so does he use this to be like hey let me reassert myself for Ryder cup purposes um you know m- make sure i'm getting picked for that team and from there like try and ride that and get some you know good finishes come fedex go playoff time to really just you know make it a no doubt kind of make sure I get picked for this team. Cause obviously they always want to play on rider cuts and stuff like that. Yep. And he has been known for, you know, the Mr. America stuff and all that, all that good thing. I mean, the, the everybody involved that I've seen via social media seems to just be absolutely loving it. Like JT saying it's like, feels like the biggest event he's ever played in, like all these kind of different things. And I'm just, it's gotten me excited personally. Like I'm looking forward to like, after we wrap here, like, I'm going to go set it up in the living room. We eat dinner. I'm going to watch Olympic golf for a few hours tonight and just really enjoy it. So I, unless you guys got anything else that we didn't get to, I think, you know, nope. we can kind of wrap it up here and yeah. look forward to watching some Olympic golf throughout the week and, you know, make sure you comment, like subscribe on the YouTube here and, you know, check us out on Instagram and listen to the podcast as well for, you know, different forms of content, but all the same nature of, you know, especially this week, heavy on the Olympic, heavy on Olympic golf. You USA, you USA, you USA. <laughs> Come on, God. get us ready for the Ryder Cup. Oh, man, I love it. Oh, All right, boy. Boy. Enjoy the golf. Cheers. 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 Cheers.